Hi, it's Stephen here at Bland Designs, and this is my page for my third art journaling class that I'm giving at Class Act. And I don't know what this is going to turn out like, but we're going to experiment together. So I'm going to try this time to use spray ink colors. And there's a lot of these on the market, and I do have a video uh, on my channel uh, comparing the different Distress Ink sprays and their properties. For this uh, particular art page, though, I'm going to stick to one brand, and I'm going to go to my um, favorite brand, which is the Distress Spray Stains by Tim Holtz. And I'm going to pick three colors for this layout, and I'm doing it in two shades of blue, Salty Ocean and Stormy Sky, and then for a pop of color, I'm going to add Picked Raspberry. I wouldn't use any more than three colors on this. Two or three are good. And probably colors that are uh, analogous would be best ones to use for this because you are mixing colors and if you use complementary colors, you're going to get brown. So I've already coated my pages with gesso and I used a palette knife uh, for this as opposed to a paintbrush only because I saw this used on a uh, YouTube video or done this way and it looked like it's a little faster and you get a thinner coat and it dries faster. So I've already done that. I've applied my gesso and it's already dry. And so I'm going to give it a little bit of a background spray with these color uh, inks. So I'm going to start with Stormy Sky and you should shake these up a little bit. And really when you're using sprays you can't control where they're going to go so just spray. A little there, a little there, a little there. And I'm going to go with the salty ocean next. And to give it a little bit more of a pop, I'm going to use picked raspberry. Now you notice that I have uh, covered my work area here because you can't control where the sprays are going to go. And I'm going to still leave it like this. The temptation here is to spray more ink on it, but I'm not going to do that. And you can see it's puddled up in some spots, and some spots are a little bit blotchy. It's already starting to dry in here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my paper towel roll, and I'm just going to do a little blotting. And I'm simply going to roll this over the pages, and that'll dry up some of my pooled areas. Now I am going to heat this with my uh, hit this with my heat gun because these are water soluble inks as you know and even though they're dry on the page they will reactivate once they get uh, more moisture on top of them for example more spray but if you dry them hit them with your heat gun they still don't become permanent but they don't run quite as much And you can see this is pretty much dry right now. Also, you don't have to put the gesso down when you're using the color sprays, but I do it because it keeps the sprays more on top of the page. They don't absorb into the paper as much and gives you a little bit more brilliant color. Okay, that should be good enough. Okay, so for the next stage of this, I'm going to grab a stencil. And this is a stencil. It's from uh, the Crafters Workshop. I'm not sure what it's called, but I just got this stencil, and that's why I want to use it. So um, I'm just going to lay it down. doesn't matter where I put it. And because I'm going to spray it with ink, I think I'll give it a little squirt of repositionable spray. Sounds like that can's just about done. Uh, because... Since I'm using very fluid colors, I don't want them to run too much under the stencil. And I'm going to change the color. I'm going to use the carved pumpkin this time. Now, one tip about spraying. The higher, oh, the further away, that's the word I want, the further away you are from a page when you spray, the more misting you get. If you want uh, and give it full pumps, if you give it half pumps, it's going to do more of the blotchy splattery effect. Now I have quite a bit of ink on there, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
plot it again. And just pull up my stencil carefully. And I've got that effect. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go all over my spray. My I think I better give it another little hit with um, some more repositionable spray. That last can I used was an old can. And yeah, that's given me a little bit more. And we'll do this again. Let's blot it. Yeah, I'm liking what's coming up here. In fact, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go all right across. Now usually when I'm using stencils I don't go all the way across. I, I kind of do them here and there, but I'm liking this patterning that's happening. Don't worry if you have overspray. By the way, cover up your area. I've, I've got some protective paper down, some newsprint on my um, work surface here because, um, like I said, you can't control the spray. I have a computer sitting right here, my brother's scanning cut, and uh, yeah, they do have paint on them. Even when I cover things up, still going to get some. So my last one right here. Okay. Okay, that's looking pretty good. So I think what I want to do is I want to uh, hit this with the heat gun again. I'm working with a fairly bright palette of colors this time. Now you see in here I got some pooling because that's where the, the seam is in the book, the spine. So I'm just I'm going to give it a little bit of a sop up here. It's okay. Remember, we're creating layers here, and a lot of this is going to get covered up, so it really doesn't matter at this stage. I do like the, the texture, though, that's happening with this as well. I think I'm dry and I think what I'm going to do with the next layer is I'm going to get out some of my uh, textured rubber stamps and I'm going to add a few little things here actually I don't know if I'll use texture this time I'm going when I come back you'll see what I'm going to use okay so I've picked my rubber stamp now my original idea was I was going to do this in regular uh, permanent ink but I'm not I'm going to try to do this using the spray inks. Now this particular rubber stamp that I'm using is one called Sewing Pattern by Indigo Blue. I really love their stamps. They've got some really great uh, stamps you can use for backgrounds and vintage looks and things like that. So this one's called Sewing Pattern and I'm going to stick to the to the color palette that I've already picked and I'm going to use the darkest of the two blues that I had and that's Salty Ocean. So I have my stamp mounted here on my acrylic uh, block and I'm just going to put it down and I'm going to give it a light spray that's probably enough and we'll see what happens I'm going to hold it for a few seconds 
whoa, that worked. That worked really well. And I'm thinking, okay, let's see what happens if I blot it. Oh yeah, that looks good. So I'm going to do that all over this background. And I'm just picking random spots. I'm wondering if I even need to re-ink it. Try it without re-inking. Yeah, it's a little fainter, but you still got another press from it. Um, is that enough? No, I need more. Now this is going to be hard because I'm in the uh, seam of the book. Yeah, I didn't get a complete impression, but that's okay. And do I want any more? I should go off the page a little bit. Might have enough ink on here to do that up here. Yeah, I got some. And maybe just do a little smidge here. Okay. I'm really liking that. That worked out really well. Now, clean up should be easy. Just a baby wipe. It's water soluble, so shouldn't be a problem. And just stamp it off on my scrap paper here to give it a dry. Take some paper towel. dab it up. Okay, so I think that's cleaned up. Take that off. All right, so get that out of my way. Move this back into the shot. By the way, I've got the wax paper under the pages, so the pages underneath won't get uh, stained with whatever I'm doing. So we're going to hit this with the heat gun. Again, just to sort of give it a set because these are water soluble. I'm actually though pretty impressed with the uh, lack of running that has happened on here. Um, I was afraid it might start to bleed through and start making mud, but it hasn't. Now there's a way to get around that if you're really afraid of that happening. There's a spray you can buy. It's called Workable, Fix -it, Workable Fixative. And you just give a light spray of that on top of the layer. Let it dry. It takes only 5-10 minutes to dry and you can hit it with a heat gun. And that will protect whatever's underneath it. So if you're putting more um, wet material on top of stuff, that will be reactivated like a stress stain with um, moisture. Then that will protect it. Okay. Uh, the next thing I want to try to do is maybe add some drips to this. And I might go to a different color. I'm thinking maybe I'll go to black. And I'm going to do that with the spray as well. So I've got to find my black here and I'll be back in just a second. For this next uh, technique with spray uh, ink, I'm going to spray the pages with some workable fixative. This is what workable fixative looks like. In fact, you could use hairspray, but I'm not so sure I want hairspray. Now, the only problem with using this kind of stuff is that it is very high odor. But um, spray it away from yourself. You only need a light coat. The reason I'm going to use this is because off camera, I was experimenting a little bit with uh, making uh, uh, the, the spray inks run. And I found it was kind of reactivating the layers below. So I don't want the areas below being reactivated. So I'm going to use this and see if it makes a difference. So just to show you how this works, you just spray it on your page and that's all you need and then let it dry. Now you can hit it with a heat gun if you wish. I'm going to just going to let it dry and I'll be back. Okay, next what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some white picket fence spray 
and I'm going to spray it at the top of the page so I have a little bit of a pool. Then I'm going to mist it with some water from my spray bottle and I'm going to tip the pages up and let it run down the page and then I'm going to blot it with a paper towel. Let's see what happens. Now this is hard to hold and get it in the camera shot at the same time here. Hope you can see this. And I'm just going to add a little bit more water to let it run. And I'm just letting it run to the bottom of the page. Okay, that's good. And now I'm going to blot it with a paper towel. Okay, that's not a bad effect at all. And I'm sorry, it looks like I'm doing this early in the morning and I'm getting sunlight across my page right in here. So, I'm going to fix that and I'll be right back. Okay, I've solved the sunlight problem and I've also turned my journal upside down to me so you can see how this runs down. So, I'm going to spray a blob there, spray a blob there, and then I'm getting them pretty juicy and then I'm holding up my journal and watch them run and I'm kind of tilting my book back and forth to get the effect that I want and then I'm just going to blot it with my kitchen towel, with my paper towels, we call them kitchen roll because I hear that all the time on the British ones that I watch. Um, I'm kind of liking that that's happening there, but I think I want more over here, so I'm going to do it again. And let it drip down. Block that up. All right. I'm going to. I think that's all I'm going to do with this for now. So I'm just going to hit this with the heat gun, and I'll be back. I've decided that my background is done, and so what I'm going to do next is collage. Now, I usually collage using pictures from magazines and that kind of thing. But I thought I would try doing something that has a little bit more uh, sophisticated uh, visuals. So I found some old uh, books at a used bookstore and I've cut out some pages in that. And this particular book that I found has some things about uh, the Elizabethan era actually and some of the classic art uh, pictures, uh, that kind of thing. I think this book was about um, the National Gallery in London, England. So I've found this picture really caught my eye. So I think I'm going to use that as a central focal point and I'm going to add a few pictures from these other pages to build this collage. I may add some uh, background papers from uh, books or dictionaries, that kind of thing as well. So I'm going to cut these out now and then I'll come back and start the layout. So I cut out my images and I've sort of laid them out on where I think I want to put them on the page. And I also tore out a couple of dictionary pages, which I think I'm going to lay down underneath uh, on each side of these. So right now, those pieces would be lifted up and they'll be here and these will overlap it. And I think I'm going to have to do something with the color of these as well. So I'm thinking of taking uh, a little bit of uh, walnut stain and uh, Walnut Distress Stain. Um, I could use the spray on this. Um, maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe I'll use some spray on it and just blot it to give it sort of an aged look. I'll come back. So I took my two dictionary pages and I sprayed them with um, a dark brown with Walnut Stain and actually I didn't like the way that turned out. I thought it was a little dark. So then I went to a slightly lighter color and I went to Gathered Twigs 
and I sprayed the pages with that and I like that a little better. Also you notice I got some of these little blotches which I told you before you can't control your spray stains or spray inks very well so those little blots aren't going to bother me that gives it sort of an aged look. But I want to add more to it and what I've done on this one is I've gone around the edges with uh, the same color in the Distress Ink Pad, Gathered uh, Twigs, and uh, just to, to make the edges that were ripped a little darker. And I'll show you how I did that. I did that with this. I just got really inky with my ink applicator. And then I'm just applying it on the edges. I'm not being very careful about where it's going. I just want the edges to be a little bit darker to set up a contrast here. Okay, I think I'm done that. So now I can lay this back out, glue these down to my uh, pages, and I'm going to use matte gel medium for this. One thing I'm a little bit afraid of is now that I've used this, and I don't have a worker to fix it if on this, and I could spray it with a workable fixative, um, that when I start laying down the matte medium gel, that it's going to run a little bit. But I think because I'm going to cover it up with the uh, cutout pictures for the collage, I don't think that's going to cause me a problem. We'll see. Okay, so now I'm going to stick down my dictionary pages, and I'm using just regular uh, gel matte medium and a brush. And this is the back side, and I'm just spreading it on the back side first. Now, oftentimes I don't. I spread it directly onto the page, but I saw somebody was saying that this is a good way to get this to stick down properly. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it here, thinking about where my layout was going, and I'm just going to put it right there, and then put a coat too much on top. Now this is another reason why the workable fixative is a good idea when you're using water soluble material or medium for your background uh, setup. Because if I hadn't used that, I would reactivate the colors underneath and they would start to run. But as you can see, they aren't running now. Now I'm getting a little bit of a run from the Distress ink pad that I used and that's okay. Um, Again, if I'd sprayed it with a little fixative, I wouldn't have that problem. If your pages curl up a little bit when you're doing this, or when you lay it down and you get some wrinkles in it, you can sort of try to smooth the wrinkles out with your paintbrush, but that's really not much of a problem. It adds a little texture. This one I'm going to put down here. Also, I'm being a very bad boy at the moment. Um, if I don't want to contaminate my matte gel, if I'm afraid I'm going to contaminate it because there's going to be some color on my brush, um, I should have spread a little bit out on my non-stick craft sheet and that would avoid that problem. But I'm living dangerously here. Okay, I've got that layer down. All right, so I'm going to start gluing down my collage pieces and I'll be back to show you the result. So all my collage pieces are now glued down with the uh, regular matte medium and it's all dry. I went over it with the heat gun a little bit and it's dry enough to work with right now. Um, but now I'm adding a title to this and I don't like my own handwriting and I have been trying to do hand lettering and to improve that but I've not been having a lot of success. I need a lot more practice. So what I've done is I bought some letter stenciling stencils. Um, sheets of them. These are the kind of thing that actually aren't purposed for art journaling. They're actually purposed for doing a wall design or signs and that kind of thing. And I found this one set that's sort of a script. Hard to show it here. And I drew out my title along here, along this space. And then I joined up some of the letters to make them look less like a stencil and more like hand lettering. And I did that all with a pencil. Now I'm filling them in with some black soot distress ink. So you can paint with this as well. And to do so, 
I just sprayed a little bit here on my piece of wax paper, or it could be your nonstick craft mat. And I'm using a fine detail brush. You can see how fine that is. And I'm just dipping it into the paint or into the stain, full strength, and I'm just coloring in my stenciled letters. And I'm not being all that careful about staying inside the lines. I mean, I'm trying to get the general shape here. And you'll notice, too, that in certain spots, probably because of where the matte medium is, it's acting like a resist. As the stain dries, there are lighter areas and darker areas. And actually, that's not bothering me for this particular page because I've got sort of this old uh, look happening on here, this vintage look. So that's just adding to it. Now I am thinking that after I get this done and I've hit it with the heat gun, that I might highlight the letters using my white uniball pen just to make this stand out a little bit more. So I've got those all colored in and I'll be back to show you what I did with the highlighting. So I outlined my letters in white uh, uniball pen, the white uh, signal uniball pen. Great pen, writes on everything. And I just went over the top and the right side of each letter, a shadowing technique that I learned online as well. And I'm thinking, okay, I need something down in this area and maybe up in here. I did think about using um, texture paste through a stencil, but I'm not, I have to change my mind to that. What I decided to do is put a little black soot spray over here on my uh, piece of wax paper or non-stick non -stick, uh, worksheet, whatever you have. And I'm using this little edger. You could use the edge of a credit card, whatever. And I'm just dipping that in the color. And then I'm just pulling it down in a straight line along the edge here and that's sort of breaking up that solid space let me do a little up here I already went across the page I went this way uh, off camera I'll just add a few more like that and so all I'm doing is I'm just dipping the edge of this sort of making very large cross hatches in these areas. Oops. Might need a little bit more ink on this. Just like that. And that's sort of breaking up the, those spaces. Now I'm thinking that I need to highlight those with maybe another color. I'm thinking white, but white's a very unpredictable color in the sprays, I find. It kind of, you know, when we did that uh, puddling with the white before, it kind of got blended right into the background. And speaking of which, yeah, you really can't see where we dripped it down, but we know it's there. But it did give us some a little bit of a, a faint foggy effect near the top of the page, which is okay as well. I'll just move this up a bit. Things are getting a little piled high here on my work area. Okay, so do I want to use the white or could I go to one of the other colors that I've already used? Um, maybe I'll try it with a little bit of the carved pumpkin, the dark yellow, because that's in the background. And I'm just going to spritz a little here. And I clean off my edge of the black and let's see what happens. So that up here and just alongside where I've already put some marks. Oh, this might work okay. I'm just trying kind of making it parallel to my other marks. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of liking the effect I'm getting from this. 
Oops. A little run, but that's okay. I also find with the distress sprays, they're not all exactly the same consistency. Some are a little bit runnier, right from the bottle, than uh, others. I guess that's just whatever happens with the, the type of pigment that they use to mix these up. Oops, ran those two together, but not a problem. Should put maybe some cross pieces in along here too. Okay, am I done? Do I need anything more? My biggest problem is never stopping. Actually, probably wouldn't hurt to run a few lines of this right into my collaged pieces. Kind of ties it together with the background. Oops, didn't do that one so well. Kind of gives it an aged look as well. Okay, I think I'll, um, I just added those dark yellow lines in here. I think I better add some black along those as well. Okay, I am going to call this done. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit it with my uh, heat gun, give it a good dry, and then I'll come back and give you some close-ups of different parts of it. So here's the final uh, uh, layout all done. Um, I add it, I, I just can't stop. I have this real problem, I can't stop once I get going. But I took my white uniball pen and I scribbled all the way around the outline here of these just to make that stand out a little bit more. And I added, which is hard to probably tell in this light, but on her crown, bring it up close, I don't know if we can get that, I add, there's a little bit of shine there, I add a little Wink of Stella. I mean, after all, a queen needs a sparkly crown out, doesn't she? So. I am done with this page. I think it turned out pretty good. And what I'm going to do uh, now is I'm just going to give it a light spray with um, a low order, a low odor clear gloss uh, finishing spray just to seal it. And that'll keep my pages from sticking together in the uh, journal when I close it up. And I would recommend that you let this dry. Uh, overnight after you've put this on um, just to make sure everything has a good dry time because there's nothing worse than opening up your uh, art journal and pulling the pages apart and ripping them because they all stuck together. So I hope you enjoyed this and stay tuned for future uh, classes in art journaling.